And so now that he's been converted, he became an evangelist. He's the one who wrote majority of the New Testament, right? He's the one that wrote probably all your favorite Thessalonians, Romans, all, all of those good scriptures we know about. That, that was Paul. And so we have to understand that they also didn't, they weren't messing with him. So they knew who he was and they tried to use his past to come against him. And they didn't want to believe. Some of them did, but some of them were like, nah, I remember who you used to be. So remember, used to be, right? And so Paul's encounter transformed his life indefinitely. And so he went from traveling the ends of the earth to kill Christians to traveling the ends of the earth to save Christians. And so we have to just remember that despite what it looks like or where you're going right now, God can always make a way. And so now we have him here. He's done got arrested for trying to save people and they planned to ambush on him. So they were plotting, they were planning, they were waiting, they were scheming, they didn't like him, they didn't like anything that he represented. And he still kept going. And so he ended up getting arrested. But we have to remember that the ambush will never kill you. It's only to put you in position for God to step in and make you win. And so Isaiah 54 and 17 says what? No weapons formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me shall be condemned. So we know that they're haters, they're people that don't like us, they're people that are going to slander us, they're people that are going to make stuff up, they're people that are going to agree with what's been made up, they're people that just don't like you. We have to understand that it's all part of the God's plan. But we know that there's, we serve a good God who will redeem us. And so Paul being falsely imprisoned, he had to go in front of different leaders to try to get out of jail. And before he could get out, they, they couldn't find a reason. So sometimes a lot of people don't like you and they don't have a reason. You can't find a reason because there isn't one. And so now they said, you know what, we're going to send you to Rome because we, we can't figure this thing out. So we're going to send you to Rome. And so when they got on the boat to Rome, the, the boat um, was in a shipwreck. And so that's kind of where we're at in the scripture. So once they had a shipwreck, they kind of were swimming and they found the island, right? And so now they're at the island of Malta, or you can call it Melita. It's the Hebrew word called honey. And so it's a small island in the Mediterranean where the King James Version mentions that the natives were barbarians. Probably they didn't speak the same language, they didn't look like them, they didn't dress like them. They were kind of like people that were just out in the wilderness. And so the scripture says that the natives showed unusual kindness for they kindled a fire and made us welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. See, Paul and the rest of the people, they were dirty, they were wet, they were probably hungry, they were cold, they were prisoners still. And now they're on this island with these strange people. See, you got to pay attention to the strange folks. Those are the people that want to pay attention to you all the time, the overly nice, but you don't know me and I don't know you. The ones that say, I love you, but it's like, do you really? The ones you kind of got a side eye. I know y'all know those people. Don't be looking at me like you don't know those people. And so I can't just assume because you say you're a believer that that's, that's what you really are. And so we have to test the fruit by the, the fruit, right? We can't just go by what people say. And so when Paul gathered the bundles of sticks, he laid them in the fire and a viper came out and it grabbed right on his hand, right? So Satan loves to attack where your gifts are. We have to understand that Satan knows who you are, right? And so he'll attack you in the very area in where you're gifted. You may not even know you're gifted, but that's where he comes. And Paul, if you go to verse 8, it says that Paul was laying hands and healing many people shortly after he was bit by the viper. So we know that the enemy attacks your gifts. And so when the natives saw that the creature was hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt he is a murderer. No doubt he is this. No doubt he is that. Justice is catching up to him. How many times have you noticed when people want to bring up your past when you do something wrong? You could be doing something right. People still try to find a way to bring up the past. So we got to watch out for those people who speculate and want to just try to attack you where they can. Don't assume my struggle if you don't know what I'm going through. Don't assume that God is mad at me because I'm going through something. See, when he shook the creature off of his hand, it went into the fire. And so we know in Ephesians 6 and 16, it says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you are can extinguish all the flaming 
darts of the evil one. See, Paul didn't freak out. He didn't go crazy. He didn't start crying. He didn't ask for help. He just shook 